Anybody know what series is coming up next week? NASCAR. How many NASCAR fans are there? Not at all? Who said not at all? You're not the NASCAR man? I love to sit there and watch cars go round and 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 round. That's what they do, right? Wow. Huh? Left turn only, baby. So here's a, ser- here's a series. We start it next week, and we will have a special uh, prize for you on our stage next Sunday night. But the, the message next Sunday night is stop going in circles. So <laughs> we're starting the NASCAR series with stop going in circles. So if you have ever been in your life and you kind of look around at what's going on and you feel like everything you're doing is just taking you right back to where you started last time, anybody ever get sick of that kind of life? People. Y'all with me tonight? Who's asleep already? Who's already gone unconscious? Randy, that's, yeah, there you go, there you go. I was so tired this morning, I went to sleep when I was preaching, so don't y'all worry about that. It's just one of them things. I'll be like, Matthew chapter... All right, what's the deal? Here's where we've been in the last few weeks, talking about the playbook, <coughs> talking about how to be successful. And we talk about it according to football rules. We talked about last week that every coach evaluates his team, finds out what he's got to work with, and then goes and does the best that he can. Uh, we talked the very first week, though, about how to hear the coach. And we made sure that we understood how important it is to hear what the coach is telling you. Because if you do not hear from your coach, you cannot run the proper play. I explained that one time where when I was, you know, back in the day as a football player, and I would hear the, co- the play from the coach and forget it by the time I got to the huddle. That was not helpful to my team. Because when you get to the huddle and the, and the quarterback goes, what's the play? And you go, dude, I don't really know. Just run something and then act like it was supposed to be there. That's not really good. So if you don't understand what your coach is telling you, then you can't be successful as a player. And what we're really talking about is if you can't understand what your God is telling you, you can't be successful as one of his children. And we related him to a coach all the way through this deal, and we've been walking through how to hear from God and what to do with that. And last week we talked about how to specifically, what do you do when you hear from God? You must act upon what you hear. You have to do something with what he tells you. We talked about in James 1.22 that, that we can't just be deceivers and just read the word and deceive ourselves, we've got to do what God's word tells us to do. And we talked about that as far as being on a team and how you do that kind of thing. Once you hear the, the play from the coach, you've got to run the play. Uh, James 1.22 is where he talked about that. But what I want to give you an example of tonight is some, a person, uh, Dr. Bill Bosick, is going to come out of the booth tonight. Um, his wrestling name is Iceman Bill. So, if you'll just give it up for Iceman Bill and get him out here and bring, get him out on stage, we're going to talk to him for a few minutes. I would, be, I would be willing to bet that y'all didn't know Bill was a wrestler, did you? Mm-hmm. It's something new we're talking about. Um, Bill, let me get that seat for you. Thank you, sir. All right, we're just going to talk about an example tonight. I'm sorry, I didn't get you a beverage. You need a sip or anything? You okay? So here's the situation. Bill is, uh, by the way, a major part of the set design team. We've got some set design people around here that do a lot of work. Y'all just give it up for them. Way back there in the back. See, the set design team are the people that sit in the dark, and you don't ever really know who they are, so that's kind of good. Very true. Very true. Is that thing on? Is it on? Yep. It is now. There we go. All right, here's the deal. <laughs> Bill, tell us a little bit about... Um, you sponsored the hip-hop concert that came to downtown Rome just a few, like, a month ago, right? Yep. Tell us how that thing came about. Uh, honestly, about, I guess about January or February, we were working on another show that was done at our church, and um, we were running around putting up posters, and we <laughs> ran into Randall Ray, who went to my church, and I didn't even know that he did, but, um, and he started asking us about, had we ever heard of Lecrae, and I, I had stayed, stated at that point, yeah, I heard Lecrae the first night I ever came to XL. And um, um, he had had a vision about two years ago, I guess, about how he wanted to do a massive concert where for that type of music where the the teenagers in this town um, could come to and learn about Jesus Christ. And um, wanted to know if I could 
make it happen because he knew that I was involved with some concert production before. And um, <clears throat> I told him, probably not. It's not going to happen. It's crazy. We, there's just no way we could probably pull it off. And I started looking into it, and um, we uh, found out that the concert was happening in July, and uh, they wanted budget of a total of about $12,000 to do it. And I kept telling them, there's just no way, and uh, there's just, it's, it's not going to happen. There's no way we can get the money. Randall, my wife, and Detrick, and a few others had started collecting money without me even knowing it because God told them to. So we were well on the way of God's plan of it happening, um, whether I liked it or fought it or not. Um, and we continued to go on to where eventually we, there was an application process to actually become whether or not we could actually do the concert for the group. And we sent in the first request, just if we can, um, when can we type of situation because we didn't want to commit to it. They sent us back an email telling us, you're booked, we're ready to go, don't worry about the, the money up front, give us what you can, we want to come to Rome, we want to do this. So that was God working, there was just no way, there was no application, there was nothing, it was just a request, hey, can we get some information, and, and God said, we're going to do this, here. So, Sweet. So what all did God use? We talked about um, <clears throat> hearing from your coach, and we talked about making sure that we knew it was God. You know, last week we talked about you get counsel from other people, but you make sure that's wise counsel, make sure it's... They're following God's word and make sure everything backs up. What all did God do to show you? I mean, that's obviously one thing right there that they just said they're coming in, whatever. What else did God do to show you guys that it was specifically his idea to do this concert instead of something that y'all had just come up with? Um, honestly, he just he kept sending us sponsors. Um, we had no idea how we were going to get the money together. Um, we'd get $100 from this person. We'd get you know, $50 from this person, $10 from this person. Um, I was driving down Shorter Avenue one day, and he told me to pull into this, uh, this car lot that I'm not going to name names of because I work for a dealership, and I'm not going to promote them. And, uh, <laughs> Even though they probably gave you money, yeah, but that's and, some uh, point. And, and I pulled in, and, and I really honestly didn't think that, um, that they would do anything because I kind of knew their history, and I, didn't, I know that they, in the past that I knew of them, they were not Christians in any way, um, but they stroked the check for a pretty large donation, and... Um, I was amazed. I, I took it straight to Detrick and said, here, I don't know how this is happening, but God's doing it, so uh, here you go. Um, we continued on going all the way through the process of putting the concert together, and when the concert came up, we were still needed about $3,000 when the doors opened. And with that $3,000, our plan was to um, do a love offering at the end of the show, which didn't really go too well because they had a altar call, which was the most important thing. I mean, the plan was, was to bring as many people that didn't know Jesus Christ to, uh, to, the, to the show and, and let them, you know, find God or find Jesus Christ at that time and become saved. And um, that night we had seven people give their life to Christ, um, and that was the most amazing part of it all. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it was very important. That, that was the whole purpose of it. We... Uh, we finished up, um, we did the love offering, but because they did the altar call kind of at the end, half the crowd left before the concert was over. Um, so we had people running around trying to get money, uh, take the love offering as much as they could. We raised about $900 and we had a debt left after the concert of about $2,000. And we didn't know what to do other than pray and, and, and know that God was gonna provide, we just didn't know when. Um, and through that process, we just kept you know, praying, uh, all of us that were involved, praying over and over, and what, two weeks later, three weeks later, um, we got a, basically I got to the point where it was time to do something, and I've been praying, and I, I got a call from a friend at a local finance office that um, had told me that they uh, uh, would give me the money to take care of it. I had kind of inquired with them, but I wasn't sure if that was what we, what we needed to do, and they called me. I lent the money, I borrowed the money from them, and um, a week after I borrowed the money from them, we got a little more money in from a, a, another person that gave money. And then uh, I won the motorcycle, which in my opinion was to pay for the debt that I had borrowed to pay off the, the, uh, the, uh, the concert. And then a week after, I think it was last Sunday, yep, a week after I won the motorcycle, Randall walked up and had received a check in the mail that had really been kind of bouncing around because the guy had the wrong address or didn't, something happened where it got lost. And this guy had been sending... Um, <laughs> $2,000 basically to us, or $1,800, I guess it was, um, to us the whole time, but we just didn't know it. And it came on God's time, not on our time. I mean, we, we, you know, I, I kept calling Randall and calling Detrick and the people that were involved going, we got to get this happening. You know, I mean, I'll pay off this debt if I have to, but we really need to try to, you know, to try to figure out how this is going to work. And, and it was there the whole time. We just didn't realize it. And, and, and it came through. God sent it through. So. Cool. 
So during the, during the whole process, what were the things that came up that really freaked you out the most, like concerned you serious? Was it just the money or was there some other things that, that were going on? It was the money. It was uh, crowd control. It was, I mean, it was everything involved, uh, getting all your vendors together, everything that, that, you know, you stress out trying to, you know, put anything together, but it all just fell in place. I mean, there was just no, it, it didn't matter what we thought was going to go wrong. God, God knew that it was, it was in place and it was going to happen and it all went perfectly fine. So. Cool. Let me ask you that, guys this question. Have you ever been to a situation where God has called you to do something and about halfway through, you recognize that there's absolutely no way you're going to be able to get that done. <clears throat> and when you reach that point where you say, okay, they only want 12000 and I have 85 cents. You ever reach that point where you begin to recognize, okay, now is the time where I figure out I can't do this. I mean, I'm pretty sure that, that you know, after that $3,000 and that night, you don't have the money. You get to the point of God's going to have to come through. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when, when the... When we had to go to Atlanta and pick up the crew, we had to give them their, or the, the, the group that was playing, we had to give them their check at that time. It was, you know, basically we had a, a remainder of a balance that had to be paid when, before the show started. We had no idea two weeks before it where it was coming from, and it was basically four, $4,500, so, and it just kept pouring in. It just kept coming in a little bit at a time, bigger amounts, bigger amounts. But the day that we had, the day they came in, we had enough to pay the group, and then we took care of the, uh, the vendors, uh, you know, three weeks later when I got the loan. So. Awesome. Now tell us this just for the crowd to know because this is a surprise question. But okay. why are you so, uh, <laughs> where the love of concerts and promoting concerts come from for you? I actually years ago went to film school and did concert production um, uh, at a school down in Florida. And um, I was very involved with it. And you did stick me with this because now it's going to get sticky. Um, very involved with concert production years and years ago. But um, I uh, actually had... A major drug problem at that time and the only way that I could get out of the drugs is to get out of the business and it was been God's plan for me to be in this business or be in production or, or set design or technical uh, the technical aspect of, of this um, all my life I've known it since I was you know doing my own video productions at home and when I was 10 years old um, but I had to get rid of I had to find God I knew God was there I believed in him but I just wasn't with him and um, once I got with them, the doors have opened up for me to basically, I've, I've done four concerts in the last year, and we've got another one coming up. And, and God's just telling me that as long as I stick with him and I go with his plan and, and I don't, you know, steer off that course, then what I've always wanted to do will come true. So. Wow. Now tell them, when I read your name off as the winner of that motorcycle, you told me that, that you had made a <laughs> statement in that sound booth back there. What was that statement? That it was... Uh, I'm supposed to win the bike in order to pay off this debt that I just uh, locked down to pay off the concert. And I'll also tell them that he was standing there at the booth on the other side. It was not rigged. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked me what, uh, what my ticket numbers were, and I told him I had 100 and 146. And he said, well, we, 146 is a weird number. He goes, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll be concentrating on 100, and that's the ticket number that he pulled. So. All the concentration. Or that she pulled. You didn't pull it. Yeah, that's why I don't pull tickets. <laughs> That's why I don't pull tickets. Well, from what I know is, and one of the statements that you did make to me is that you said, when I heard that, that my name come out, I knew that if I'll just do everything God says do, he'll take care of it. Absolutely. And, and I know it's a, it's a very practical illustration, but I wanted you to hear that because it amazed me how, because Bill came to me early in this, and, and we talked about money and stuff, and, you know, certain people did certain things, but I'm looking at it going, okay, you're doing a free concert, which, by the way, doesn't make you any money. Right. And, and didn't make you a penny. <laughs> didn't make a dime on those free well, tickets, did we you? We actually cleared two dollars. Two bucks, really? Done, you ripped somebody off yeah, on a free yeah. ticket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody here have to buy their ticket? Because <laughs> you need your two dollars back. I'm gonna tell you that it was free. But in that, the whole time I'm thinking, you guys need twelve grand, and you're gonna do a free concert. It's gonna be very interesting to see how God does this. Mm -hmm. And I have loved watching even after the concert was over. First of all, seven people gave their lives to Christ. Absolutely. Which makes it worth well over $12,000. And second, God has come through on every dime. Yep, every penny. And $2 more. And $2 more. You, you know what? <laughs> $2 and two cents right there, baby. You can get you a fine one tomorrow morning. There you go. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll give you the two pennies. <laughs> Guys, I wanted you to hear that because what God teaches us is 
if we do what he tells us to do, you know, you've heard if you were an athlete at all, your coach would say to you, if you'll do what I tell you to do, we will win or at least get closer. But if you don't do what the coach says do, you will not win. And what we learned through Bill and through Randall, through Detrick, through the guys that put this thing together is, if you'll do what God says do, no matter if it sounds crazy or it sounds expensive or it sounds impossible, God will always come through with a win. Because that's what happened. And, and by win, what does that mean? doesn't mean that we're going to be successful. doesn't mean that everything's going to go our way. It means that in his plan, we're going to win. And, and I appreciate you, Bill, being an example of exactly what that means to do, exactly what God said, and then allow him to come through and trust him in that. I appreciate you, bro. Okay. Give it up for him now. <clears throat> Iceman Bill Bosick right there, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all should have seen him in his wrestling years. It was, um, just, you know, spandex and all. Yeah, I know that was wrong. Sorry. <laughs> Wasn't as wrong as a spandex. All right. <laughs> Here's a few things that you need to hear before we go home tonight. You have heard how to hear from God. You have heard that if you hear from God and you do what he says, he'll bring you through and he'll always, always, always come through. He just does. That's what he promises us in his word. <clears throat> That's what he teaches us. And if you'll hear from him, we talked about it. Test it with everything you've got. Test it against Scripture. Test everything you hear. Test it. You know, he's driving down the road and says, God told me to turn into a car dealership and ask for money. I know that some of you are thinking, how the heck did God just tell him? What was that, on the radio? You know, you're hearing this song, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, Iceman, pull into this place, and that's the way, that's the way God spoke to him. How is that 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 happens? You know how that happens is because when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it becomes so close and so tight that your spirit then, because God takes his own spirit and puts it inside of you, and then God can communicate with that spirit. And that's how you're driving down the road sometimes, and you feel that God saying, you know, I need to pull in here because there's something in here for me. And you don't know where that came from, and you don't even know how that got started in your life. That's a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's where that goes, and that's what happens when you give your life to Christ. But still test everything. Even when you're driving down the road doing that, test everything against God's word because he will never, ever go against his word. But I'll give you a few things tonight to go on as you, as you work the whole playbook concept and as you try to become successful. You know, Scripture tells us that God's got a plan for us and it's a plan for us to be successful. You remember that verse? Y'all ever heard that here? His plan is what? Better than our plan. His plan's better than our plan because it's successful for what he wants us to accomplish. But I'm going to give you a few things that we've got to do as you begin to actually step up and say, you know what, anything God tells me to do, I'm going to do. I am going to become the player that every coach loves to have. I'm going to listen to my coach. I'm going to make sure I know specifically, clearly what my coach has said for me to do, and I'm going to do it 100,000 million percent until I cannot do it anymore. That's what every coach in America is looking for, and that's what God's looking for. There's a, there's a scripture, a passage in the scripture that actually teaches us that God searches throughout the earth looking for people whose hearts are completely his so that he can support that person. He's looking for those people that will stand up on a Sunday night at XL and say, listen, I'm going to follow him no matter what. I will do anything my coach says no matter what it costs me. That's what he's looking for. And if you're willing to say that tonight and stand up and say, you know what, I'm going to do this without question because this is the team that I'm playing for and I am a child of the living king and I'll do anything he says, here's what you got to do. Number one, you got to stick to the playbook. You cannot start a play and change it in the middle and expect God to bless what you're doing. I know because I've tried that many, 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 many times. And you start ministries, and then halfway through, you're like, oh, I don't really like it this way anymore. I'm going to do it this way for a little while. And then you go off on whatever you got going in your head, and it becomes something that God never planned for it to be. A lot of you have relationships that are like that. God, God put you together with a friend, and, and now you've started a relationship that was never supposed to be that way. Some of you have jobs that are that way, and you prayed for a job, and then a job came available, and it wasn't the job God wanted you to have, but because it was there, you took it, because obviously that's God. And now you're in the wrong job. 
and you're so far in the wrong job you can't get out of it because you got no money to eat tomorrow. But that's what happens when we go outside of God's word. Number one thing you got to do is stick to the playbook. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 and 8 says this, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. Only when. Only, only when you follow God's word will you be what? Prosperous and successful. That means if you want to be successful and you are not following his word, what are you going to end up? Non-successful. <laughs> I love it, and I was kind of waiting for that word. So, Our goal is to be successful according to God's plan. But he tells us if you want to be that way, you must stay in his word. Let me explain it to you again, guys. And we've talked about this a number of times just in the last few weeks. But if you're not trying your best every day to find out what God's Word teaches you and says to you, and if you're the one, if you come here every Sunday night for all the teaching that you need and you never read it during the week, you are not going to be successful in the plan God has for you. Why? Because you don't know the plan God has for you. You don't know what He wants you to do. So you must, if you want to be that successful person that we're shooting for, and if you want to be on that team that wins, you've got to know the playbook. And you've got to stick with it no matter what. So halfway through, when you're tired and it looks like nothing's working or whatever, you don't just shift it and you don't just change it all up. You do what God tells you to do according to his word. And I can promise you this. If you always follow God's word, he'll bless you for it. Now, it won't, it won't always be pretty. It won't always be the best for you. It won't always be the thing that looks the easiest. Any testimonies to that? Anybody know that sometimes when you follow God's word, it's not always that nice? But nice isn't what God promised you. Nice is never what God says, this is what you'll be. He says you'll be successful according to his plan for you. And the only way you can do that is be living according to his word. So if you're not, I'm just letting you know. We try to be as clear as possible here, but if you're not reading it and if you're not studying it, you're not going to be that person, and we just need to understand that. So when you leave here and you're not that successful and it doesn't work out for you, you know why. So we can start at that when you want to come see me sometime and talk about what that really means. Number two, never try to accomplish something without God. Anybody ever just going to admit to that? You've decided, you know, this is a great thing for me to do. I'm going to go ahead and jump out here and get this thing done and left God behind. If you've not given your life to Christ yet and you're still thinking about this, here's one of the coolest things and one of the scariest things at the same time. God will always be with you, okay? From the time you give your life to Christ, he will always be with you. Scary part is you can decide to walk away from him. And you can decide that you're going to go here and you're going to leave him here. And what scripture teaches us is that that's a very, very bad idea to do anything without him. It says it in 1 Samuel. It says, so he sent David away from him and gave him command over a thousand men. And David led the troops in, the, in their campaigns. In everything he did, he had great success. Listen, because the Lord was with him. I want you to understand that if you want to live that life of great success, the only way you will live it is by doing everything you do and the Lord being with you. Because we're not successful by ourselves. We don't make the right decisions by ourselves. None of you are good enough to make all the right decisions when God's not next to you. None of us are. Me, none of you, it ain't going to happen. Gene is close. Other than that, we're pretty much out of luck. We're not making all the right decisions without God next to us. But it says it very clearly, a different part of Scripture is Moses talking, and he's leading the people out into the crazy world. In Exodus thirty-three fifteen. it says this, Then Moses said, If you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. God had come to him, and he had said, okay, I need you to go over there, but I'm going to stay over here. And Moses says, whoa, wait a minute. If you're not going, I'm not going. 
You know what that tells us? It's an example for us. A lot of times we'll pray about things, and the first answer we get, the first inkling that we have an answer, boom, we're gone. And God never one time told us to go there. But we have this feeling, you know, that feeling you get from that bad taco that, you know, we always count as God speaking. Oh, my stomach just feels, I must, be, I must need to move to a different country. No, you need to take a Pepsi. But the truth is, what you need to commit to is you need to commit to the fact that you will never move without God saying move. And you'll never sit still when he says go. And if you can commit to those two things, you'll never be without him. Because when he says to you, sometimes he tells you to wait. And we hate that because we don't like to hear the word wait. And we don't like to be told to be patient, you know, and just wait on God. And what we've decided is if we're giving our lives to Christ, he needs to be telling me to do something right now, and I need to be actively doing something for him. Well, you know what? If God says sit there, you actively sit there as long as he says. And you will be actively doing what God has said to do. But the scripture is clear. Don't ever go anyplace without him. And stick to the playbook all the time. Number three, this is one of my favorite ones. Always use your friends. Now, truthfully, what good is a friend if you can't use them for something? You know, you all thought it. You just don't like to put it out publicly. But you know that. You got these friends. You're like, man, that friend right there, yeah, he's going to help me one day. I know when I met Bill at the Nissan place, I was like, mm, Bill's a good friend to have. Bill sells me every vehicle I have now because, you know, Bill's got the connection. You meet certain people like that, and you begin to think of how you can benefit from this friendship that you have. Huh? can't hear what you're saying to me. <laughs> we'll get it later. But that's exactly right. And we try to benefit from this. But here's the key. Here's the key to it all. Make sure you are not out trying to be what God's called you to be without your friends supporting you. Because we love it. At XL, we really love it. Because we love to come in here and we keep it kind of dark in here. So truthfully, you can come in here, sit in the dark, get up and leave, and not meet one person. And some of you try that every week. And like right now, it's a little too bright for you. And you're like, dang, they need to turn the lights down a little bit. Somebody might see me here. And you want to be on your own because you're this lone ranger kind of dude and you've got it all under control and, and you don't need anybody else. Well, you know, the truth is God built you to need other people. And you need to be using the friends he's put in your life to make sure they're helping you grow. Scripture says to us very clearly in that whole deal, um, Where's that bad boy at? Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. I would imagine that there were times that Bill and, and Randall and Detrick were sitting around talking about this concert and thinking, you know, because I, I, in my world I'm thinking if it was just you, it may not have happened. As a matter of fact, you said up front it wasn't going to happen until they started without you. You know, but if it was just Randall at some point, been just Randall for years, and God finally brought people and made that connection, didn't he? So when he puts those people together, we can do more stuff for him. And when he puts you with a friend that's going to help you grow and help you get to where you need to be, you can accomplish more. But you've got to stay away from the whole, you know what, I'm in control. I've got this the whole thing covered. It's all about me. Because all that comes from that is an attitude of pride, and all that comes from that is destruction. Because he teaches us that all over the Bible. So make sure you're using your friends wisely. Number four. This is the last one I'll give you tonight, but this is key because here's the, the, the deal. Ask God to make you successful. You can ask God to make you a success. Did you know that? See, some of you have been taught, man, you don't pray about stuff like that. You just pray about, like, God, you do what you want to do, and it's your will, and all this kind of stuff. Look at what the Bible teaches us. Nehemiah 1.11, O oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. Genesis 24, 42. So today when I came to the spring, I prayed this prayer. Oh, Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success on this mission. Psalm 118, 25. Oh, Lord, save us, O oh Lord. Grant us success. I want you to hear from me tonight. There is nothing you can't pray for. 
And you've been taught, some of you have been taught over the years in these different places that there are only certain things you pray about and stuff. Here's what I think you should pray about. Anything you want to be successful, you pray and ask God to make that successful. Anything you don't care about, you leave on the back shelf and don't mention it to him. Because what God says is, you are my child. And if you use the example of children, if you have children, you want them to come to you. You want them to come to you and say, hey, help me with this. Help me understand this better. Help me be successful in this. That's what we do. But you know what God says to us? Hey, just ask me. And I want to make you successful. Always come to me and always say, God, this is what I'm doing today. Some of you have jobs that you're just like thinking, you know, I could run from this place tomorrow and I hate every bit of the work that I do, whatever. Ask God to make you successful in that. Not running from it, doing it. Ask God to help you be successful in the things he's called you to do. You know, he's, he's asked you to read his word every day. Ask him for help in that. I think so many times we get into this mix-up where we're supposed to do all this stuff and we're supposed to make this happen and this happen, but truthfully, we don't know how to get it done. And instead of asking God for it, we just throw the book down and say, I don't understand this stuff anyway. I'm just going to forget it and go on about my business. God says to us clearly, I want you to be successful. And he shows us scripture after scripture about people that are asking him, God, this is what I'm doing for you today. I pray that you make it successful. And that's not wrong to ask for that. That's not wrong to start a business and say, God, make this successful. It's not wrong. God says, you do things according to my plan, and I want to make you successful. So as you work through these things, and, and as you're, if you're willing to step up and say that tonight, stick to his word. Always make sure he's going with you. Don't ever go without him. Always use your friends and ask God to make you successful. But the key to it all is this. Still, this is the same thing as the very first week. you got to know the coach. And you got to do what he's telling you to do. And my challenge to you is just like it is a lot of times out here. If you don't know God yet, if you don't have a relationship with him yet, tonight's the night to, get that, to make that happen. Tonight is the night to say to somebody around here in one of these silver tags, man, here's the deal. I want Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I don't know how to make that happen. By going to someone and saying, I need help with this, you know what you're doing? You're using your friends wisely. And you're finding people that can help you meet Jesus for the first time ever. But here's the deal. If you don't know the coach, you don't know the play. And if you don't know the play, you can't be in the game. And if you're not in the game, there's absolutely zero possibility of success. So my challenge to you both, if you don't know Christ yet tonight, make tonight the night you meet him. Number two, if you've got a relationship with Jesus and you know the coach and you know what he's telling you to do, go do that and do it according to the plan I just gave you. Guys, that's my challenge to you. That's the, that's the playbook series all wrapped up in just a few minutes tonight. But the key is knowing the coach and then doing what he tells you to do. And if you want to talk about that tonight, we're quitting a little bit early tonight, but if you want to talk about that, we will be here. If you want to talk through that, if you want to pray with somebody, if you need somebody to just ask questions to, we love to do that too. Because we're here to help you meet and connect with the God that created you and has a great plan for you. So let me pray for you, and then I'll uh, see if i got any announcements to make, cool stuff like that. God, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity even to know you. And we thank you for the privilege of being in your family, God. And I pray for those people in this room that, that don't have that family yet and haven't given you their lives yet, God. I pray that tonight will be the night they do so. And God, let them know that there's no better plan than your plan for their life. God, I thank you for those people in here that already know you. And they, they know the coach and they know what you're saying. They're just not acting on it. And I pray that tonight they'll start acting on what you're telling them to do. We love you totally, God. We completely trust you. And we thank you for time like tonight. In Christ's name that we pray. Amen.